All right, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, part two of the super mini uh, introduction training. So part one uh, was just talking about an overview, uh, some of the value added features and the market successes of the super mini product line. Uh, this, this module or, or this section deals with how to apply the super mini at the spindle. So first thing about super mini, um, the screw, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, that has, it's very important to the performance. Uh, so keep those changed out. Most of the screws are a 6.075T 15P. Uh, and they should be tightened to uh, around five, uh, five Newton meters. Um, use torque limiting when you can uh, as best practice. Use the largest diameter and the shortest length possible. Always uh, be mindful uh, that you need to give the chip room though. Uh, so kind of balance getting chips out of the bore and also uh, the rigidity of the tool. Center height is uh, critical to performance of the super mini inserts. Uh, poor height alignment can cause inconsistent or lower tool life. Uh, super mini tools are designed to be run on center, not above and not below. And we would recommend, you know, keeping them um, within center, within a thou, uh, you know, as, as close as possible. Center height gauges are available uh, if you need a little help in aligning your tool holder. Once you align that tool holder, uh, every tool that you put in and out uh, should be on center. So the part number for the uh, gauge, uh, just it's a gauge insert. Um, if you contact our customer service, they'll, they'll be able to help you find that. But the middle of the part number, it's an LEHR. So highly recommend uh, using those uh, tools. Also, uh, other issues, how to apply uh, chip control in small uh, bore turning can be an issue. Uh, so implement uh, strategies found uh, with other internal grooving platforms. So they use much of the same strategy in the other larger internal turning. Take multiple passes and work towards free space. Uh, so normally in grooving, you, uh, you start at the back of the part and you work your way out of the part. Um, but sometimes uh, it, it's necessary to take a small, uh, smaller width than, than the component and just break it up. And that helps make the, the chips a little smaller and sometimes easier to manage. Use a stair step method. Um, so use a smaller uh, grooving insert than you have for width of groove and then stair step your groove down. Uh, speed peck we'll talk about in a second, and also use uh, chip breakers, the H and HV. Uh, you have access to those within the Super Mini system. So speed pecking is uh, is a process um, of doing exactly that, just pecking at the the component. So you divide the depth, the total depth of the groove, um, and good starting value is maybe fifteen thousandths uh, depth per plunge, and then you plunge 15 thousandths and you retract at 0.5 the feed rate. So half of the feed rate. So if your feed is uh, two thousandths per rev, you would retract one thousandths per rev. And you just repeat that process with a macro or can cycle until the depth is achieved. Uh, dwell function can also be used, um, but tool wear may increase. Anytime you sort of dwell and stop in a component, you create heat, and uh, heat can cause uh, tool wear, increased tool wear. In addition to uh, speed peck, um, you also have access to geometry. So there are uh, two geometries in the Super Mini system, that being the H and the HV. So as you can see, uh, the H is a fairly tight chip breaker, and the HV is just slightly more open. Um, for most applications, I would start with the HV and then work to the H uh, because the, the smaller, more narrow chip breaker, um, it can compress the chip and depending on the material and the, and the application, 
um, you can cause the edge to break by compressing that chip too much. So I always like to recommend go, go for the more open chip breaker, and then if needed, use the tighter chip breaker. All right, so um, a lot of questions uh, come up. You know, if you if you call um, if you call tech for help uh, with your component, uh, questions can come up um, about the application. And so I thought it was handy to have a, a short list of what uh, what our technical group might ask you about that component. So the first and foremost, material and condition. So uh, not only the material uh, specification. Is it 4140, uh, but also is it heat treated? Um, is it annealed? Uh, what is the condition of that material? Very, very, very important in small bore turning. The minimum bore diameter, so that in horn language, that's a D min. The length of the part or the L2, the depth of groove, that's the T max, or uh, T max means T fall max, which is uh, T fall is German for uh, depth. Uh, corner radius, R, width of groove, W, tolerance, bore, contour, interrupted cuts, and the handing of the tool. Um, another additional piece of information that is very helpful uh, to, um, for us to help you is the part print. Uh, so whenever you can acquire a part print, even if it's just a partial of that specific operation, is extremely helpful. Also for face grooving, uh, some of the same things, material condition, minimum bore diameter, uh, DA min, depth of groove, T, uh, T max uh, A, uh, so the depth into the part, the corner radius, the width of groove, the tolerance, and are there any interruptions or side drilled holes or anything? So those are important things to focus on. <clears throat> A short um, word about cutting parameters. Uh, so if you look in any of our uh, technical documentation or catalogs, you'll see that our cutting parameters have a very broad range. And uh, the reason for this, and this happens in the Super Mini and the, and the Mini system, is because you're dealing with very small uh, bores sometimes down to eight thousandths of an inch or maybe a twenty thousandths of an inch bore. And it is impossible with most machines to achieve uh, a 590 surface feet. Um, so most of the time you're limited by the machine spindle and not the tool uh, because um, the smaller you go, if in fact, if you're less than quarter of an inch diameter, um, very rarely are you going to achieve the top end uh, speed, only if you're dealing in very extremely difficult materials. So that's why you see 46 surface feet, uh, which seems abnormally low uh, but if you calculate an eight thousandths, uh, an eight thousandths or twenty, uh, sorry, a twenty thousandths bore with an eight thousand RPM uh, spindle, it comes out to forty six surface feet. Um, so what I generally recommend uh, on the cutting conditions that you find, just take the SFM, multiply it by 0 0.6. That way you're you're no you know you're not going to be on the the low side and then just um, multiply that top number by six and use that as a start. The other thing, uh, cutting conditions. So uh, just as a general rule of thumb, um, you have different sort of processes for the super mini. You have grooving, profiling, face grooving. So for the grooving part, um, four tenths to eight tenths on uh, the feed per rev. Don't worry, you can go over that, uh, but just as a starting condition, start there um, and work your way up. Profiling, eight tenths to two thousandths, face grooving, because you're on axis, you're pushing back on the axis of the tool, you can be more aggressive, uh, eight tenths to two thousandths. The the reason uh, also that you need to uh, really focus on uh, the radius. Uh, so the radius of the tool should really be your minimum depth of cut. Uh, so always keep that in mind uh, when specifying your, your feed parameter. 
is look at your depth of cut. You need to be over that radius. Otherwise, the forces are changing and it's actually pushing the tool off of the work component. Uh, so when you, um, when you try a feed, make sure that you're, you're actually engaged enough uh, to be effective and you're not pushing the tool off. Also, um, as you extend the tool, uh, in this case in profiling, we always give the caveat to uh, parameters are really dependent on a lot of factors. Um, always start with the lower depth and increase until your surface finish tool life or dimensional accuracy are achieved. So just uh, don't start at the maximum uh, and break a tool. Uh, start at the minimum and then work your way up uh, to uh, where you need to be for uh, productivity. Uh, but if you look at if you look at the uh, short versus a long tool, so the L2 um, and different material conditions, you can see that for easy material, if you're short, you can go sort of more than 16 thousandths depth of cut, uh, depending on uh, the limitation of the tool. For long, you can go eight to 16. Average material uh, like steel and stainless, you know, 4140s, 316, uh, 420, you can go 4 to 16 for short and 8 to 16 for long. And then in difficult materials, uh, pretty much stay um, titanium, 6AL4V, nickel, and cobalt type materials, 4 to 8 for the short and 4 to 8 for the long. So err on the side of, of, of 4 and then work your way. Uh, work your way up. All right, so now let's talk about um, the gray nomenclature. Uh, so the first two digits are not really critical uh, for you to know. Those are horn specific, um, horn specific codes. The second, you have uh, the second to the last and the last digit are the approximate thickness and the substrate. So you can have thicknesses from two, three, four, six, and nine uh, microns. Some may be a little bit um, thinner uh, than, a, than a two micron, but in basics, two, three, four, six, and nine micron coating is what you'll find. Um, the substrate, you, a P20 is a two. Uh, so this happens to be a five. So a five is an MG12. So five is uh, very prolific within the super mini uh, product line. It is, um, it's used very widely. It's very, in fact, it's very odd to find something other than a five. Uh, usually it's for specific purposes, uh, like the K10 is a harder grade. Um, and the P20 and, and P40 are tic-tac grades. Those are a little bit, maybe tougher uh, than the MG12. But for the most part, you'll find MG12 in the Super Mini system. Then if you talk about uh, coating systems, uh, so most of the grades being the five uh, substrate or MG12, then if you talk about the coating system, you can have a uh, TN35, for instance, and that's just a titanium nitrite coating. Uh, the TN coat is a it's still widely used, uh, but it's old, really old technology. Uh, titanium nitride has been around uh, for a very long time. Um, and that was super um, superimposed with the TH35. So TH35 is a, is a more advanced system. Uh, and that's aluminum titanium nitride. It's great for steels um, and secondary for stainless and iron. The EG3, uh, so the EG35 uh, grades, that's the newest, latest and greatest technology. And that's again, aluminum titanium nitride um, with a high PIMS um, a special process um, and also has a tin flash layer uh, for wear detection. Uh, because as, as you know, with PVDs, with darker PVD coatings, sometimes it's a little difficult to to actually see the tool wear. So that has that uh, additional tin flash layer. The EG55 is not used in Super Mini. Uh, we'll talk about that in the mini, uh, the mini presentations and mini training. 
Um, it just is a too, it's too thick of a coating for the very, uh, very acute edge of a super mini. The ES1, uh, that's a great one for stainless. Also, uh, as a secondary in difficult alloys uh, like titanium. The HS is really shines in difficult alloys and hard materials. Uh, so using like a, an HS36 grade, um, you can machine hard materials um, over 50, uh, 50 Rockwell. The TI25 uh, or so the TI2 system is titanium carbon nitride and that's usually paired with the five substrate also. And that's a great uh, general purpose for stainless. Uh, I've also seen it used a lot in uh, heat resistant alloys like titaniums and also non-ferrous and aluminums. Um, DD2 is the coating for uh, non-ferrous uh, like aluminum. It's a titanium diboride coating. Then the NE2 isn't used much in the, in the super mini uh, system. Uh, but it's a uh, tetragonal amorphous carbon. Um, it's kind of like a, not a diamond like carbon, but it's, uh, it's made for a very, very sharp edge tools. Uh, you'll see this some in, in solid carbide, uh, the NE2K on solid carbide tools. In addition to um, carbide uh, substrates, uh, you also have access to ultra hards. So ultra hards, uh, tip tools within the super mini. Um, you have grade CB10, that's for hard steel greater than 56 Rockwell. Um, you also have PD75, uh, that is polycrystalline diamond. Um, it says milling here, but it's, it's kind of a tougher grade uh, for, a tougher grade for out of round kind of condition uh, that you might find in, in turning. And then HDO3 is CVD-D. Uh, so CVD-D is chemical vapor deposition process, uh, but of diamond. So uh, it's very high purity, uh, very high hardness. Uh, so those are options that you have uh, with tip tools uh, within the super mini program. All right, uh, this concludes the super mini introduction uh, training. Um, we hope you can make it to all of the, the live trainings, but we offer this as a supplement. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, uh, please, um, please add those to the YouTube video uh, under comments and we'll address those. Additionally, uh, you can contact uh, Technical at Horn USA or product training at Horn USA if you have a question on any of the content that you've seen. Thanks and have a great day.